Etymology is a Greek word that's been transliterated into Latin, that's been transliterated into English. When you transliterate a word, you keep its pronunciation. So we don't have an English word for etymology. The etymology is, is made up of two Greek words. Etho, meaning true. Amen. And logos, meaning word. So etymology is the truth of a word. So you trace back a word to its truth. Isaiah. In the actual Hebrew, it is Yeshia. Yeshia. And some will have Yeshiyahu, where the U at the end is the way. Isaiah is Christ's name backwards. Yesha, which is actually Yasha which means save, salvation. <coughs> In Matthew 1.21, it is actually known as a Hebrew, Hebrewism. A Hebrewism is a play on Hebrew words, whereby in Matthew 1.21 it says, And thou shalt call his name Yahshua, Yahshua, because he shall yasha his people from their sins. And it shows you the correlation between yasha and Shua. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Once again, Yeshia is the Messiah's name backwards. The Messiah's name is Yahweh's salvation. Or translated some more, I am that I am your salvation. Whereby we have a greater understanding of John 3.16. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because his son, his very name, is prophetic. He is ushered in the salvation. Yes, Yah is backwards which is salvation of Yahweh. Now, the English language is known as a bastardized language because in the English language it will take and incorporate any other word from another language. So if you keep using the word in the English language, it becomes English. You with me? Uh, for those of you who like to study, Basically, uh, Bell Labs and Berkman uh, basically uh, invented a great deal. Oops, that's cool, a great deal of computer terms. That's right. So these computer terms have been transliterated. Computers called computer, internet is called internet, the web is called the web, regardless of what language you speak, right. because it's been transliterated. Now that being true, I just want to show you this: the English language. A great deal of the English language comes from the German language. But all the uh, languages are also a break off of Latin, and we use Latin letters. So whenever you see an I, it actually would be transliterated as a Y. You'll notice that in the King James Version Bible, the names that end in I, A, H, Isaiah, Zechariah, Nehemiah, Obadiah, I-A-H. Once again, it's transliterated as Y-A-H. And you'll still hear it. Isaiah, Zechariah. So whenever you see the I-A-H at the end of the name, it always pronounced as the Yah. Jeremiah, Zechariah. Obadiah. Saints, it's very important to take the word and to move on it very, very powerful. Amen? And what you always want to remember is that the Heavenly Father's name is so powerful that just invoking his name brings salvation. Amen. But the word says, whosoever calls on him shall be saved. Amen. That's a very powerful name, that just invoking the name 
Hallelujah. So anyone who dies with that name on their breath will be saved. But the word says, Hallelujah. You with me, saints? Whosoever calls on his name shall be saved. Okay. Now in the King James Version Bible, Hallelujah, I just want to show you this real quick. In Isaiah 50, verse 4, reads, The Lord God. But for those of you who are students of the word, you'll recognize, are you with me? Mm -hmm. That the Lord is capital L, small o, small r, small d. But God is all capitalized. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see God with a capital G, capital O, capital D, or whenever you see Lord with a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, both of these are substitutions for Yahweh. Mm. So with the King James Version Bible, you have consistency. The consistency is that whenever you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, or capital G, capital O, capital D, it's a substitution for his name.